Okay, in this video, we're going to look at magnetic levitation. Now, you could build this as a fun project or a science fair project for your kids. Now, I've built a few of these, and there's a few different ways of building them. This one uses a Hall effect sensor to measure the distance between the electromagnet and the permanent magnet. So, this is my electromagnet, and I have a spacer in between the electromagnet and my Hall effect switch, so it won't interfere with the readings. And then I have a microcontroller that's reading the Hall effect switch and controlling the electromagnet to keep the magnet levitated. So it's pretty stable. I could spin it and I could take the weight off. I could just put the magnets in there. So in this video we're going to go through how we could make one of these levitation devices that you could build on your own. Okay the first thing that you will need is an electromagnet and you could build your own just go to the hardware store and get a three inch bolt and two washers. These are one and a half inch washers. You slip them on the bolt and take a three eighths nut and screw it all the way to the end. Then get some black tape and you can line the bolt in here with black tape to keep the washers apart. Then get some magnet wire. I use 22 gauge magnet wire like this. This is Belden 8063. And I put the bolt in the chuck of a drill and then turn the drill. I wind my coil back and forth until it's the same diameter as the washers. Then you get yourself an electromagnet. Now the next you'll need is permanent magnets used for levitation. These are rare earth permanent magnets. They're pretty powerful. You get these online. They're pretty common. So the next part you need is the linear Hall effect sensor which is the OH49E. Okay this is the linear Hall effect sensor that we're going to use. This is the OH49E. It's available online. You can see it's pretty inexpensive. It's less than a dollar. And here's a schematic diagram of the OH49E. It has three pins. Pin 1 is VCC, pin 2 is ground, and pin 3 is the output, the voltage output. Now it can run on 10 volts, but we're going to be running it on 5 volts in our project. Okay, here's a linear Hall effect sensor, the OH49E. And you can see it comes in the TO92 package. It has three leads, 1, 2, and 3. So this is the face of the of the Hall effect switch and it's sensitive to a south pole magnet. So as the south pole magnet comes closer to the face of this Hall effect switch, it'll output a voltage on pin 3, 2 millivolts per gauss. So as the permanent magnet is coming closer and closer to the to the face of the of the Hall effect switch, it can determine how far away it is by the intensity of the, of the gauss measurement. Okay, here's the output characteristics of our linear Hall effect sensor, the OH49E. Now normally when there's no magnets in close proximity to the Hall effect sensor, there'll be half VCC output on the output pin. So if we're powering it with 5 volts, we'll have 2.5 volts when no magnets are in close proximity to the Hall effect switch. Now as we apply a magnet, a south pole magnet, towards the face of the Hall effect sensor, we'll be applying a positive gauss to the face of the sensor. The output voltage will increase from 2.5 volts up towards 5 volts at 2 millivolts per gauss. Now this voltage is fed into the ADC converter of the Arduino Nano and it will use that value to keep the magnet levitated. Okay, here's the wooden frame that I built for my levitation project. I mounted my electromagnet on the frame. I just bolted it through the top with a nut. Here's my electromagnet and I put a spacer. It's just a piece of foam. And on the bottom of the spacer is my Hall effect sensor. So with this spacer in here, it keeps uh, the magnetic field from the electromagnet disturbing uh, the, the readings on the Hall effect sensor. Now on the side, I put a terminal strip. So I run the output of my electromagnet and the three wires for the Hall effect sensor to this uh, terminal strip. So I can run the wires down to the base. Now here's my base. It's just a piece of plastic that I ha had uh, laying around that's so I could stand it up. And then here's my Arduino Nano on my PC board, on my breadboard. Eventually I'll install it to the inside of, of here to make it a cleaner project. So that's my frame that you could build similar to this. Be creative, come up with your own ideas for your own frame for your levitation project. Okay, here's my levitation circuit mounted on my breadboard. On the left you can see a 5 volt regulator, a 7805. That's feeding 5 volts to power the nano and feeding 5 volts up to power the linear Hall effect sensor. Now the electromagnet is powered by 10 volts and it's turned on and off by this, by this MOSFET, this MOSFET transistor, which is being driven by one of the GPIO pins of the Arduino Nano. And I have a LED here which is connected to the gate of the MOSFET so I can see when there's gate drive. 
So eventually I'm going to put the circuit on this smaller breadboard and it has a sticky back and I'm going to mount it right inside the bottom of the base so it's going to be a lot cleaner. Okay, here's a code running on my Nano for my levitation project. And it's written in fourth. It took me about 10 minutes to write the code. That's why I program in fourth. Now the first word you see there is Cal ADC. So that's my little calibration uh, program. So if I run that, it's going to read the ADC from the Arduino Nano every 10 milliseconds. So it's going to read the linear Hall effect sensor output every 10 milliseconds and give me ADC reading. So I could calibrate it. I could bring the magnet up close to the Hall effect switch until I find my levitation point. And once I find that levitation point, I read the ADC value. In this case, it was 700. So I'm going to use that in my code. So this is my whole code here. It's called levitation. So if I run that, the first thing it does is init. Initializes pin 8 as an output. That's a GPIO pin. That's going to drive the gate of the MOSFET to energize the electromagnet. So I'm going to go into a begin until loop. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to read ADC value. I'm going to read the linear Hall effect sensor. And if I get an ADC value greater than 700, that means it's too close to the electromagnet. It's going to turn pin 8 off. So it's going to want to drop the, 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 the magnets. Now if it's less than 700, that means it's going, it's, it's going away from the electromagnet. It's going to turn on pin 8 to bring it up higher. So that's our trigger point. So it's going to, it's going to trigger between on and off to keep the, the levitation point at 700. And it does it over and over again until I hit any key, and then it's going to come out of this program. Now this little feature here, 650, when I pull the magnet away from my, uh, my device, it's going to sense that there's no magnet, so it will actually turn off, it will turn off the electromagnet. It will de-energize the electromagnet. So it's kind of like a, a turn-off feature. When it senses that there's no magnets present, it will actually turn off the electromagnet so there's no current draw. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to the gate of the MOSFET that's driving the electromagnet. Now when the pulse is high, when it's 5 volts, it's energizing the electromagnet. And when the pulse is low, it's de-energizing the electromagnet. It's turning it off. Now you can see it's self-correcting itself. You can see it's moving. You can see the on and off times are, are changing to keep the magnet levitated. Now if I pull down on the magnet, if I pull down on it, you can see it's, it's trying to keep, keep it up. So the on time is getting longer. It's trying to force it up. Now if I force the magnet up towards the electromagnet, you can see the on time is getting narrower, it wants to drop the magnet, it wants to let gravity take it down. So if I let it go, there it is by itself, levitating the magnet. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my levitation project. It's powered by 10 volts, so the 10 volt power supply is feeding the electromagnet, which is turned on and off by the MOSFET, the IRLZ44N. Now the 10 volts is also feeding the input of the voltage regulator, 7805, so we're getting 5 volts out of the regulator, which is fed into the Arduino Nano, also up to the Hall Effect sensor, the OH49E. Now the output of the Hall Effect sensor is fed into the A0, the ADC0 of the Arduino Nano. Now the output pin 8, the GPIO output, is driving the gate of the MOSFET, which is turning on and off the MOSFET. Also have a LED on the gate to indicate gate drive, so we could actually tell when there's gate drive to the MOSFET, which is energizing the electromagnet.